Hi, I'm Tucker Albrizi from Mystery Iglesias, and you're listening to the Man Cave Chronicles with Elias. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal! You're my boy, bro! Yo, we did it! We did it! A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah! TV. Nice! Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more. From deep inside the Man Cave, your host, Elias. Tucker, welcome to the cave. Thank you, Elias. I'm really happy to be here. How are you? What's new with you? Not much, man. Uh, I'm just chilling. You know, I'm up in Canada right now. Uh, You know, just hanging in on that quarantine life. (laughs) How's that treating you, by the way? You know, it's good. Uh, I've been an introvert most of my life, so there's not much to change. Just been hanging inside, playing video games, you know. It's Christmas time, making eggnog, stuff like that. What are you doing in Canada, by the way? Is that where you live now? Uh, it's where I'm trying to live. My girlfriend's a uh, Canadian citizen. I'm applying for like the permanent residency. So we're up here right now. She's going to university up here uh, at UBC. So I'm going to apply to live here eventually. But right now, I'm yeah. just visiting. Yeah, you'll be traveling back and forth for work, I assume? I mean, when there is work, you know, due to COVID, yeah. most of the stuff is shut down. Um, but if there is anything, yeah, I go back. So you've been you've been busy for a few years now. You've been acting on different shows. You know you've had uh, appearances in like on Good Luck Charlie, uh, AP Bio, and now of course Mr. Glacius. So you've been busy. Yeah, man. I, I try to keep busy. You know, um, I've been doing it for a long time since I've been eight. You know, so it's one thing I, I I try to do, and I'm just lucky to keep doing it. Yeah. Uh. So you said you mentioned you were eight years old. Uh, what pushed you to this? Well, I, I originally got into acting because I wanted to get out of school. <laughs> um, I, I saw I saw people on the TV and I thought that they were just like playing pretend and being a kid. I was like, oh, I could do that. You know, like I could try it. So I pitched it to my mom. You know, she was really supportive. We started small in, uh, you know, like commercials and stuff in Florida. And then it just kept building. And then eventually we came out here in Los Angeles and we stayed. What, uh, what were you watching that you kind of had an idea of this, what you wanted to get into? Oh, man, I have no idea. That was so long ago. But I think it was like, um, <laughs> I think it was um, soap operas, actually, just something like really, like, just really cheesy. And I'm like, oh, if they could do that, I could do that. <laughs> so when you moved out to LA, is that when you started taking like acting lessons? Like what happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we actually went to L.A. for a different reason. My brother had a charity called uh, Driving for Donors because he was diagnosed with le- uh, leukemia. So we we drove around the country signing people up for the marrow donor list. Right. Um, and a small independent film company wanted to do a documentary out there um, for him. So we went out and I was doing commercials in Florida. So I tried to you know give it a try out there. And like for my third audition, I ended up testing for one of the roles in um, Modern Family. So it just kind of, you know, worked. And we're like, all right, let's see if there's something to it. And it just stuck. Oh, wow. Well, did you get a part in Modern Family? I've seen the show. I don't remember you. No. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get it. It was down to me. I don't remember the kid's name, but um, one of the one of the main kids. And it was, oh, me it was and one him. of the main kids. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So what was like one of the first uh, gigs you got out there? Uh, Big Time Rush, I think. That was wow. Nickelodeon show back then. So it's like one of the first ones getting started when I was little, little, you know? So I was watching clips on you. You also had a, you had a role in Big Bang, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a, a co-star for that. It was really fun. Yeah. How was that? That was going to say, like, being on something like that. Oh, that I mean, that was that was another level, you know? They're, they've they been doing that for so long. And it's in, <laughs> I remember they... um. You know, so it's a sitcom, right? So they rehearse yeah. like Monday through Wednesday. Thursday will be pre shoots, and then Friday will be live show. They were just like, uh, I think we got this one. Let's skip Wednesday and take the day off. Like they had their stuff so nailed that they're like, yeah, I don't think we need the rehearsal day. And then we just took that day off. So those guys are pros, you know, definitely know what they're doing. And that was a lot of fun to do that. Out of all those shows that I mentioned earlier, you know, like, you, like I said, Good Luck Charlie, like Big Time Rush, AP Buy, like what's been one of your favorites to work on? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, or the most fun, I guess. Most fun. I really, I really like Mr. Iglesias. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. It, it's it's such a blast. And I mean, you don't. It's not so often that you get along with every single member of the cast and crew. Like I feel like I do on Mr. Iglesias. It's it's been 
such an amazing time, you know, and every everybody's chill. Nobody, you know, has got to stick up their butt. Everybody's having a great time. You know, Gabe is amazing to work with. He's one of the best stand-up comics in the, in the game right now. Um, I've seen the energy that he brings to the stage and how he interacts with the crowd. It, it's just, it's awesome, man. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that. Like, how did you uh, end up on that? Like, I want to hear the story of uh, auditioning and all that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so um so for for the first audition i actually almost didn't make it because i was too busy playing video games um <laughs> uh which actually goes in line with my character really well since he's a big slacker but um i almost didn't make it because i was too busy playing video games and then um you know i auditioned for it and it went well i mean you know you never really know how it goes until they call you or you don't hear anything um and then i remember auditioning a second time for a callback i didn't do any testing but i think it was just like one two and then i was there you know did you go in for tucker originally is that what the character was or did you no else? it was for it was for uh walt yeah it was for my character walt i don't i didn't audition for anything else now when you audition for this was this in front of just like uh, writers producers or was it was a uh, game there too no it was it was way more small i feel i i it was a casting director and then the second one was casting and producers uh i didn't see gabe until we started working um i think that was because like the the character originally was like recurring you know so they didn't know how many episodes they didn't really know the format like if we we're yeah. gonna be in all of them at the whole time so it eventually built into a bigger character but um you know it was, it was nice it was a it was a good guest star auditioning thing and it luckily built into something really wonderful so it just premiered back on Netflix, uh, part three. Uh, so uh, you play Walt. How would you describe that character? Oh, Walt, is, he, he's a kid in school that doesn't want to be there, you know, like, which I resonate to a lot. Uh, he's a huge slacker. I mean, in, in most of the shots, I actually try not to keep my textbook open when most of the kids are. I mean, in the first season, I had a, a Golden Girls coloring book like in my desk that I would pop out and do during scenes. Like, you know, he tries to focus on everything other than school. That's how I describe all. Would you say you have like a lot of like common with them, like your personality and everything? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, it, it, it's great to play a role that I don't really have to fetch too far for. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so you, didn't, you didn't have to do a lot of research for playing this role. Oh, no, man. I was born to play a slacker. I just roll out of bed and do that. <laughs> so how? So you mentioned working with the cast. Like, uh, how would you describe that environment? Oh, it, it, it's sick. I mean, everybody gets, gets along so well. Um, it, it's such a chill environment. I remember Fabrizio Guido and I, we, we had Razor kick scooters, and we would ride that from our dressing room to, like, Crafty and pick up snacks and then ride back, and then it's a good way to get around on set during rehearsals. I mean, it's such a chill vibe, and everybody gets along so nice. It, it's like a family almost, you know, like that's a little cliche, but everybody gets along so great. I mentioned earlier I had uh, Fabrizio on the show. Um, I'm trying to remember my interview with him. Now, this show gets filmed in front of uh, audience, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a live studio audience. Yeah. So you were you able to film all this before the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. Our last filming date, because we filmed part two and three together. Uh, okay. Our last film date was February 18th around there. Um, so we got it right in as soon as this stuff was building up. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we had a whole audience. It was great. What uh, what made Netflix like break this up to like so many parts? You know, I have I have no idea. Um, it, it, I think they're just trying to do a different model of streaming. You know, like there's some where they release it on a weekly basis. There's some where they drop the whole season at once. I think this was a just a, a different approach to dropping episodes, you know, doing it in yeah. parts. For this season, uh, do you have a favorite episode that your character was in or just overall? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really liked in part three episode – Four, I think it is. Um, it's the one where Gabe teaches me how to drive and we see some stuff with Marisol's father. I, I think that episode's really, really great. Um, I was in between Gabe and uh, Franco, I think his name was. I, I, I probably got that wrong. But two, two great comics and they're both speaking Spanish in there and I have to like guess what they're saying and stuff. It was really funny. I really enjoyed that. Any mentions for uh, another season? 
I mean, hey, fig, fingers crossed. I'll, I'll as soon as I say the word, I'll be there. You know, um, you, there's a lot of ways to, to tackle it. I know Gabe was saying in an interview that they were even thinking about doing, um, you know, uh, social uh, distance learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. there's there's yeah. a lot of ways that they could tackle it. You know, um, let's see. Hopefully, it goes somewhere and we can figure it out and try something different. Has there been a scene that you were in where? you just kept screwing it up and it was like everybody was laughing. <laughs> yeah, actually the first episode of the first take of the uh, part two, the yeah. first time we were back after the first season, it was like one of my lines and I just couldn't get it for the, for the life of me. And I was like, Oh really? This is a great start, <laughs> right? Like this sets the bar really good. So how do you, how do you play it off when you, when you do something like that? Uh, you just, you just got to shrug it off, you know, because it's like, there's so many people in there. You got to just, you yeah. take it on the chin because you can't get in your head about it because I mean, being an actor is stressful enough because there's so many jobs that are not your job. If that makes sense, you know, there's camera, yeah. there's lights, there's all these people. And then your job is just to show up and say some words. And, you know, so it could be pretty stressful to try and nail it. So especially when you mess up, uh, but you know, you just got to take it and move on and get it eventually. There's gotta be a lot of bloopers on set too with like Gabe Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. He he's the best at just improving and making jokes. I remember at um at both of the rap parties, they have a blooper reel and those are the best. I mean, they're the highlight of making the season. So what uh, in um what's next for you, man? Like any other were you able to film any other projects before the pandemic started? Uh, unfortunately not, man. Um, you know, I finished Mr. Glacius and then that was that was it, you know, and stuff kind of took off with the pandemic, uh, nothing really fell in place for me. So I've just been, you know, chilling, staying put and trying to keep calm, you know? Yeah. So like for auditioning, have you, uh, started becoming like the master of like uh, self tape practicing? Oh, yeah, man. I love self tapes cause you could wear sweatpants underneath and they don't even know. So it's, it's definitely right up my alley. Uh, that's why I like voiceover so much. Cause you don't even have to like get, you just roll in pajamas and be like, all right, I'm here to work. Um, <laughs> Have, uh, you done any, have you done any voiceover work? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The best one I've ever done was Paranorman. That was by Leica Studios, the same people who did uh, Coraline. Uh, oh. That was that was huge, huge, huge. That was that was one of the best things I've done. You know, I went to Portland to see how they, uh, if you know, made a stop motion picture. And they showed me these, like, the models that they used. And each one's, like, 35 grand. They each have their own, like, skeleton with indeposable, like, knuckles and stuff like it's insane wow. you mentioned video games how would you like to do that for voiceover oh i would love it i mean i don't know if i mean voiceover for video games is so intense i don't know if i have the capacity but if there's anything that i could be if i could work in it, i would be down do you have like a dream role you want to play someday <sighs> i've never really thought of it um i don't know i mean Hmm. That's a, that's a hard one. I, I don't, I haven't really put that much thought into it, but I, I would have to say just, I, I really like Walt and I know that's like yeah cheesy to mention the thing that I'm in, but like, I, I got to go back to that. I relate with him being a slacker. I mean, that's me. I try, I try to put in the minimal amount of effort. Um, and that's what he does. You know, he just shows up and I really resonate with that. So on your downtime, what do you enjoy doing? I know you mentioned video games. What's your uh, favorite system and game? Oh, dude, I built my own PC and stuff. Um, You're a PC gamer? Yeah. I, well, yeah, I dabble in everything. Definitely PC for sure. Um, I built I built this one right here uh, at the beginning of the year, actually, right before the pandemic. It's sick, man. It, it's awesome. You know, it's got like 12 fans in it. It's crazy. Wow. But, um, you know... I, I try to dabble in everything. I haven't gotten the new stuff yet. I'm trying to to wait on that because I usually get it like first thing, but just deciding yeah. to wait. Uh, you know, Cyberpunk's cool for people that could play it, but I, I like Lord of the Rings, man. You know, I read sometimes. Got the Hobbit and the, the all three books right here. Uh, just you know, nerd stuff. Yeah. What's the What's one show you've been binging lately? Uh, I actually just finished for the first time ever Breaking Bad. I never, I never saw it before. Um, what did you think of it? Oh, it was great. I mean, like, I was like kicking myself. I'm like, why didn't I watch this sooner? Um, 
it, it was really, really good. Um, I like Midnight Gospel because it's kind of like a podcast, but with like really entertaining visuals. I like Adventure Time, sort of cartoon stuff that's visually entertaining is nice. Uh, I just also started Malcolm in the Middle. Never saw that before. This oh, is so catching funny, up, yeah. right? I mean, like I'm really bad with seeing these really iconic shows, apparently. So I got to catch up and do my homework. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people that are behind on shows but that's the great thing about streaming you can just pick it up and just start watching it dude yeah anytime you got a whole library right there <laughs> uh tucker uh lastly how can the listeners uh find you on social media oh yeah yeah um so it's just my name at tucker Albrizi. um mainly over on instagram that's where i'm at uh twitter it's the same name so just look me up like that tucker man this was fun uh, thank you for coming on the show this was great thank you elias That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC Podcast. And our website, themccpodcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.